Okay, so here we are. <clears throat> this is advanced coding out of the next step manual. This is chapter six, cardiovascular. Again, this book, remember I've said it in every video, this book is excellent at taking the coder from that beginner level to the advanced or to, to a higher level of understanding by way of using the three manuals together when appropriate, but certainly the CPT and the ICD-10 manuals together. So um, I think um, <clears throat> this book is vital in getting you to the level you need to be um, for this uh, CPC board. Again, this particular book has a little bit of wordy stuff, reminds you some stuff, includes some of the diagnosis stuff that will kind of help you in your ICD-10 journey. And then it's mostly um, straight scenarios. <clears throat> Again, the answers for the uh, odd cases are all in the back. So we will, we'll, uh, I would rather talk about cases based on their content to see how I can help you. And then if you need the even answers, you just need to let me know. And um, I can get you the answers to the even cases when you need them. So here we go, case one. This is a consultation. Again, really pay attention to your italicized information. <clears throat> consultation for atherosclerotic heart disease, so they have coronary artery disease. And I think kind of as you flow through here, it looks to me like um, they're doing some pre-op work uh, workup. They've had a stress test. Um, and I think they're going to end up, they had a cardiac cath, they're going to end up deciding um, uh, that it's okay for him to have that knee replacement surgery. So um, uh, because he needs the knee replaced, it's kind of pushed this coronary revascularization information or uh, need surgery instead of kind of watching it. They've kind of had to push it. So this would be um, a decision for surgery. So this would use a modifier 57 because they decided to do the surgery on this date of service. And then you would have your um, consultation code for this. Uh, diagnosis codes uh, looks to me like uh, the patient has the atherosclerotic heart disease. He also has diabetes, which would play a function in how they're managing um, his disease, so those would be your diagnosis codes. A little bit of wordy information regarding your artery bypass graphs. Remember these graphs? Um, <clears throat> you have vein only, then you have artery only, and then you have the combined. So really, really make sure that you're capturing um, the, the information correct. And so here's a scenario, the 6-2, this is the bypass surgery, and I'm gonna walk through the different graphs that they've done for us to get to the right code. Okay, so you always go with the post-op diagnosis, so the diagnosis for this is gonna be that atherosclerotic heart disease. They end up telling you that they're gonna do four bypasses or four graphs, so that's how many we've got to come up with. Um, this is nice kind of having it summed up. So they're telling you <clears throat> um, they used a left internal mammary artery to the left uh, anterior descending bypass. So that's going to be an artery bypass that they used. Then a sequential vein, saphenous vein, to the aorta to the first and second obtuse marginal, so there's two more, of the left circumflex with an ongoing graft to the posterior descending coronary artery. So they have one artery graft and three vein grafts. See, I put A's and B's. So when we get to the CPT, remember we have the combinations. So here's our um, coronary bypasses. So these were vein only. These are combined. And these 
are artery only. Okay, yeah, these are artery only. Sorry, I had my hand on top of it. So they did one artery and the three veins. So your first code, your artery is going to come here, 33533, three, three, because you code your artery first, then pick up your veins. Then we've got three veins, so you're going to use code 33519 for three venous graphs. So we have one, two, three, four. So now we have all of those four graphs. Now the other piece of information we need to find out is if they used a scope uh, in order to look at the saphenous vein to harvest it. So uh, we need to look at that. So finding surgery. They talk more about the internal mammary artery that's generally always harvested um, <clears throat> when they first cut through the sternum. Patient was brought to the operating room, underwent intubation, a segment, here we go, a segment of the greater saphenous vein was harvested from the left thigh using the endoscopic vein harvesting. So that's going to be that 33508 add-on. So you're going to have three CPT codes for this, and then your coronary artery disease or atherosclerotic sclerotic disease, that I-2510. All right, pacemakers, another good kind of wordy section for you to go in and check your notes. You should have pretty good notes. Um, <clears throat> case 6-3, this ends up being an E&M about um, patient has six sinus syndrome, uh, insufficient uh, valve, um, so looks to me like patient also has dementia. I would add that because that's further gonna complicate. It would be one of the last ones, but it uh, he's been following down. So they need to do a dual pacer, dual chamber pacemaker. They're trying to get a hold of the family. Uh, if they consent, then they're gonna go on and uh, probably send him to the hospital and get the. Um, pacemaker put in now. So it looks like this is a fairly immediate problem that's going on. He's been fainting some, that kind of thing. So you're probably, if a doctor's needing to do surgery soon, like today, for a, for a problem, um, that's going to be a high level acuity. Okay, here is some wordy stuff on your echoes. This would be very good to go in and make sure you have um, good notes for that section that the, this, these echoes would be actually in the medicine section. Valve insufficiency, um, this four uh, is an echo, has a good discussion, so I'm going to let you do that one. Five is your halter monitor, um, your uh, radiology, the answers are in the book for you. Good information about the halter monitors. Uh, another radiology uh, for post-implementation, very, very common for when they're putting lines in or leads in. Pacemakers have one lead, two lead, multiple leads, that they do a, an x-ray at the end just to make sure that the placement is correct. Same thing they would do for an endotracheal tube, same thing they would do for an NG tube, placing a feeding tube, a urostomy tube. If they're putting tubes in, I, um, <clears throat> even central line IVs, um, they're, they're going to check for placement. So it's very, very common for that to happen. Here's good wordy stuff on your stress tests, kind of just concise information, not pages and pages of crap that, not crap, sorry, uh, oodles and oodles of information like we had in the 321 coded book. It's taken all of that great information we needed at a basic level and kind of condensed it into what we need um, <clears throat> in a more um, advanced or a higher level understanding. Here's your stress test. Remember, you have to determine, and your italicized will probably tell you, you've got one code that's global, and then if it's, if the, if it's not at the doctor's office, 
and he owns the equipment and pays for the staff, which means it's global, then you're going to have to use two codes, one for the supervising and one for the uh, report. Uh, myocardial perfusion scans. Here's this is this is just these are good, really, really good scenarios for you to have to kind of struggle through and read the words through to get to the code to then go back and say, OK, so when I coded this perfusion scan, the stuff I really needed to pay attention to, all of the other stuff was just some noise. But the stuff I really needed to pay attention to was maybe um, <clears throat> um, where, where was it performed? So it's telling you that it was performed at a local hospital. So the hospital's going to own the equipment and own the staff. That tells you immediately you're going to need two codes. So one's going to be for um, the, the stress test um, uh, supervision, and one's going to be for that interpretation and report. And then here's the perfusion scan of it. Kind of backtracked a little on you, sorry. So um, you've got to code for the nuclear part of this down here. And that's how they go together. It splits them up, but they, they go together. Um, and you'll need a 26 modifier. Remember, any radiology, you need that 26 modifier when we're coding for the physician side of it, unless you code for a radiologist who owns the equipment and owns the um, uh, staff or pays the staff. Okay, again, uh, 6C, 6C, uh, yeah, 6C is the echo Doppler, still a component of, and this has helped. This is a great, great, great scenario to kind of learn the different parts of a Doppler and how to pick it out in all of the wordy stuff. So here's your 2D information, wall motion information, which is that pulsed wave, and then your color flow. So you can take that information, plug it into your CPT, and find the code better. Cardiology consultation. Again, that's just what it is. This is going to be um, a, a CPT, a ENM, hospital service. And, and really pay attention to your A, B, this case, because some of these cases can go on. It seems like forever. <clears throat> then you're going to have your cardiothoracic surgery consult. So they go to the doctor, they need to go to the hospital, they get admitted into the hospital. Then they're going to have a chest x-ray, pretty standard. Then they're going to have a cardiothoracic surgeon consultation because they probably are going to need surgery. And then E is another chest x-ray depending on what they've done. Maybe they put a chest tube in, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe they're just again doing it for um, the symptoms. Another echo Doppler. We've kind of gone through that. This one does not highlight so hopefully you've made some notes from the previous one to be able to code that. Another cardiac consultation, very, very common. <clears throat> then we've got some catheterization wordy stuff. Remember the catheterizations are in the medicine section and they're really divided up pretty, um, pretty user-friendly these days. You used to take us five or six codes to code one cardiac catheterization because you had to place the catheter, do the injection, um, do the right side, do the left side, um, uh, do the uh, ventriculography, You'd add all those up and it was a separate code for each. But now they're kind of bundled in and they're, they're um, indented underneath that main code. <clears throat> this talks a little bit about your balloon, your angioplasties, and talks about your stenting. This is an emergency outpatient record. So the patient is in the emergency room. So that's where you would get your ENM. They have a chest x-ray. Looks like they have some. They're going to be admitted for, what are they going to be admitted for? Let me see. Uh, 
acute myocardial ischemic event. So that's not, that's not technically a heart attack. So really make sure that you index that right um, for your ICD-10. Then there's your chest x-ray. Remember to look for your views, single view. If it doesn't tell you views, you're gonna to have to assume it's a single. But there could be two views, three views. Then a hospital admission in. Cardiac catheterization. So here's another cardiac cath. Uh, here's what they do in the cath, the PTCA which is the angioplasty and stenting. This is really, really, um, these are good, good examples. And remember, all you have to do is either message me or email me and I will um, uh, get you the even answers. But try to work your way through all of these. The whole book is full of just this kind of stuff. Kind of once you get used to it, it isn't as big of a hassle, but you have to get over the hurdle of just seeing the noise of all of these words on the page to then be able to, okay, so what do I really care about? So this is an admission to the hospital. So what do you really care about? First, you have to find a level of service. Then you have to find the diagnosis code to support that level of service. So the patient's being put in the hospital for palpitations. That's it. Um, is there any, do they have diabetes or asthma or something like that that could complicate it? They probably don't if your doc is only putting one diagnosis in the assessment. That's, it's a, they, they might, in the real world, you may have to dig, but in these books, it's a little bit better self-explanatory. So now all you have to do is determine your level going into the hospital. And, and if this patient's walking in the door and stable going up to a room, they're not probably not going to be a level two or a level three because you're not going to have the documentation or the medical decision-making complexity to support it. Uh, they did general chemistry, so this gets you um, doing a little bit... Um, <clears throat> Be from just diagnosing, you're not necessarily gonna um, uh, code all these. These are just um, the chemistries that were pulled, so you need to determine the diagnosis to go with them. If you don't have anything, it's going to be that admitting diagnosis. Uh, ECG, radiology for the chest. And then we have a new case. So it's another hospital admission. Uh, this one. I'm just looking for the diagnosis. So they have recent chest pains. Came in for a stress test and they started having chest pain and bradycardic, so low heart rates. Yep. That'll land you in the IC, ICU anytime. So this patient, opposed to this one that we saw over here going in for pretty straightforward things, this patient was in a procedure having a stress test, had symptoms, had to be medicated, and is now being put in the ICU. Very different um, looks for um, this admission, very different. Here's your cardiology consultation. That one goes kind of forever. Now your cath, which is very standard. So you go in, you have a stress test, you have chest pain, you get put in the hospital. First thing they're gonna do is check for blockages to see if that was the reason for your chest pain. Very, very, very common. It's just kind of played out in a lot of steps here. Um, then you're, and then it just kind of stops. I guess we'll never, never find out what happened to that dude. So your cardio version, this is when you're in a rhythm that is not um, optimal. And your docket wouldn't necessarily, if it's life-threatening, you're going to get shocked anyway. I mean, it's, that's life-threatening. 
Cardioversion is generally an atrial um, type of rhythm. Rhythm doesn't have to be, but generally is. Atrial rhythms generally are not life-threatening, at least not immediately. Um, they do have side effects. But uh, most commonly, the patient's in atrial fib. Um, they need to be, quote, cardioverted, shocked a little to get back into normal sinus. So they give them a little bit of Valium and then shock them. So that's, that's kind of the scenario here. <clears throat> Here's a trans, trans esophageal um, echo. So make sure you're getting, instead of transthoracic, this is trans esophageal. So this will be in your medicine section. Make sure you're getting the different components of this. You'll need three different um, CPT codes. Op report here for a thrombo in darterectomy. We're kind of out of the, the heart stuff here. The heart stuff stops. And now we're into just the rest of, rest of the vascular system for a few. So this is a thrombo in darterectomy. You have that section within the CPT. If you can it, maybe use your index in the CPT. Um, again, always use your post-op. So this is a right carotid stenosis. They're having a carotid thrombo in darterectomy. They will be having an EEG during the surgery, most likely. That will be bundled into your code. And then it's pretty straightforward from there. Radiology report, again, very, 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 very common for hospitals to do lots of chest x-rays. If any of us have been in the hospital much or with a loved one, very, very, very common. Um, your thrombo and arterectomy, I would label it with your RT because you have a mirror image of the right and the left carotids. Um, 16B. Okay, oh, 16A is a venogram. So we've got a... Um, they're, they're looking at, um, oh, this is at the upper extremity. Interesting. I was kind of thinking maybe they were looking for something else. Now, it looks to me like they, the patient has chronic renal failure, CRF. You don't see it that much. Uh, Label that. And they're going to end up putting in a um, uh, arteriovenous fistula for dialysis. So this is the venogram looking to see in that left upper arm the best place to put the fistula in. So then here is the fistula going in. You do have that section um, right in your CPT. This is the left arm, so this is placement of a primary arteriovenous fistula, left wrist, so make sure you use your LT. Um, this is for chronic kidney failure or chronic renal failure. That's your diagnosis. Um, 617 is another arterial fistula going in. 18 is a triple A um, op report, abdominal aortic aneurysm op report. These are actually fairly common. Um, you, you don't do surgery on them until they're a certain size. They just kind of watch them. So this would be under aneurysm repair abdominal aorta. Um, the, the code's pretty easy. It's 35082 to get to, but I want you to read so that you get used to reading all of the noise, all of the words, and then at the end you're like, wow, that was a whole lot of crap, but all they did was the aneurysm repair. But it gets you really used to all of that, like they're talking, the aneurysm was then opened. Well, that tells you it was a direct approach. It wasn't through a scope or any other way, it was direct. Um, 619, this is a femoral artery laceration. So this is gonna be repairing. Um, so looks to me like they've got a retroperitoneal bleed and right femoral artery laceration. So there's two different things going on here. So um, these aren't lacerations as in the skin. They're actually repairing the blood vessels, and that's why you're in here opposed to um, a skin laceration that happens to be on the thigh. 
this is all this is femoral artery laceration this is really deep so that's the difference um, this is probably a really good one you're probably going to have three or four um, five different um, diagnosis codes because there's complications this happened during surgery so there's the complication of a puncture accidental um, complication of intraoperative puncture. Um, if the patient's heart stopped, you're gonna have cardiac arrest. Uh, you're gonna have complication intraoperative of a hemorrhage. And it's the hemorrhage that probably, it's, so the puncture hap happened, they hemorrhaged, then the heart stopped. Then they had to, um, probably there was some endo, uh, intravascular co uh, coagulopathy too. So you probably have several diagnosis codes on here. I think I probably just gave them all to you. Huh. Uh, and then we're into auditing. So um, not a heck of a lot. Uh, cardiovascular can get really um, daunting. So it gets kind of frustrating. So um, I've talked through most of them. Try them on your own. Then let me know if you need um, any of the uh, even answers or uh, email me or post a question for any of these cases and I'll help you any way I can. See you in the next video.